number. Our first value is our x coordinate and is plotted on our horizontal x axis. Our second value is our y coordinate and is plotted on our vertical y axis. Today we're going to be plotting points using both positive and negative values. All points are going to start from the origin. If we have a positive x coordinate, it's going to go to the right of the origin. Negative x values are going to go to the left of the origin. Positive y values are going to extend above the origin, and negative y values are going to extend below the origin. If you look, you'll notice the points we're going to plot today are all very similar. This is going to let us pay closer attention to which direction we need to go on our x and y axis for our positive and negative values. We're going to start with the point 2, 3. On our coordinates, we'll notice there's no positive or negative sign. If there's no sign, we can assume our value is positive. So I'm going to start at the origin and plot my positive 2, which means I'm going to go two places to the right. For the y value of 3, again, no sign means we can assume it's positive, which means I'm going to go up three places. When I plot my point 2, 3, I'll notice that I'm in quadrant 1. All x values in quadrant 1 are positive, and all y values in quadrant 1 are also going to be positive. For our next point, we're going to plot negative 2, negative 3. To plot the x coordinate of negative 2, I start at my origin, and I can go two places to the left. To plot my negative 3, I need to go down three places. When I plot the point negative 2, negative 3, I notice that I'm in quadrant 3. All x values in quadrant 3 are negative, and all y values in quadrant 3 are also negative. For our next ordered pair, we're going to start with a negative 2, which means we're going to go two places to the left of the origin. Our y value of 3 is positive since it has no sign in front of it, which means I'm going to go up three places. When I plot the point negative 2, positive 3, I notice I'm in quadrant 2. All x values in quadrant 2 are negative, and all y values in quadrant 2 are positive. To plot the point 2, negative 3, I'm going to start at the origin. No sign on the 2 means we can assume it's positive and go two places to the right. Negative 3 means I now need to go down three places for my y coordinate. When I plot this point of 2, negative 3, I see that I'm in quadrant 4. In quadrant 4, all x values are positive and all y values are negative. If we pay attention to the pattern of the points in each quadrant, it's a good way to help us check to make sure we've gone the correct direction. Being able to determine the location of a point is a crucial skill when working with a coordinate plane. When we're working with all four quadrants, being able to determine the sign on our x and y coordinates is also crucial. Let's start by identifying this point where our x-axis and our y-axis intersect. Where our x-axis and our y-axis intersect is the origin, and the origin is located at point zero, zero. Remember, when working with ordered pairs, our coordinates are always inside a set of parentheses with a comma separating the x and the y values. Let's come around and start here in quadrant 1. To determine the location of this point, we start by seeing where it lines up on our x-axis. We can see that we're to the right of our origin so that we know our x value is going to be positive. We notice that our point lines up with the 5 on the x-axis, so the x value in our ordered pair is going to be positive 5. Next, we can look at its y value. When we come across, we can see that we're going to be above the origin, so we know our y value is going to be positive. We can also see that our point lines up with the 3 on the y-axis. So positive 3 is going to be the y-coordinate in our ordered pair. So the ordered pair that best represents this point is positive 5, positive 3. Coming around to quadrant 2, we can determine the location of this point. When we check its x-coordinate first, we notice we're to the left of the origin, so our x-value is going to be negative. We notice our point lines up at the negative 4. So in our ordered pair, our x-coordinate is going to be negative 4. We can check to see where it lines up on the y-axis. We notice that we're above the origin, so our y-value is going to be positive. Our point lines up with the 2, so positive 2 is going to be the y-coordinate in our ordered pair. So the ordered pair that best represents this point is negative 4, positive 2. Coming down to quadrant 3, we start by checking its x-value. We notice we're to the left of the origin, so our x value is going to be negative. We also notice our point falls between negative 3 and negative 4. Since the scale on our x-axis is counting by 1s, and our point falls about halfway between negative 3 and negative 4, we can estimate its x value is going to be about negative 3 and 5 tenths. 
Now we can come across and check its y value. We notice we're below the origin, so its y value is going to be negative. If we check, this point lines up with negative 4 on the y axis. So this point is best represented by the ordered pair negative 3 and 5 tenths, negative 4. We can finish it off by identifying our point in quadrant 4. When we check its x value, we notice it's to the right of the origin, so our x value is going to be positive. Our point lines up with 2, so in our ordered pair, positive 2 is going to be our x coordinate. Coming across and checking its y coordinate next, we notice we're below the origin, so the y value is going to be negative. We also notice our point falls between negative 1 and negative 2. Looking at the scale on the y axis, we see we're counting by 1s. Since the point falls about halfway between negative 1 and negative 2, we can estimate the y value to be about negative 1 and a half. So the ordered pair that would best represent this point would be positive 2, negative 1 and a half. So when working with four quadrants, we not only have to pay attention to how far we go on our x and y axis, we also have to pay attention to what direction so we can determine if our ordered pair needs positive or negative signs in it. Check out the other videos in our playlist and don't forget to click on subscribe. Thanks for watching.